Cyberbullying has been on the news and on the rise lately. And so I ask Reverend Warren Bavakwa, Director of Christian Education and Young People's Ministry, to speak with us and tell us a little bit about a recent bullying workshop that he attended. Thank you for coming, Warren. Sure. Uh, what do you think is the main thing that you really took away from the cyberbullying workshop? The main thing was uh, the breakdown of the fact that, and I had never heard this, but that there are really three people involved in every bullying attack. There's the bully, there's the target, and then there's the bystander. Okay. And what our presenter really pointed out was that the bystander is really the one with all the power. So what did she suggest was a way to have that power really um, stop the bullying with the bystander? Well, with bystanders, they're afraid to get involved because they're afraid to become the target. So she made some suggestions of uh, just general things that it, the most important thing was to be safe. You don't ever want a bystander to become the bullied mm -hmm. um, or the target. So in cyberbullying, it could be as simple as when you get a tweet or a Facebook post or a text about someone else, delete it. Simply delete it. Mm -hmm. The thing with cyberbullying that seems to make it so intense is that it's 24-7. Um, so some people I've heard say that well, just delete your Facebook account or just don't look at a text that you get from a certain bully or something. Mm -hmm. Did she say anything about that? She did. Uh, actually, another um, workshop talked about how much young people use uh, Twitter, Facebook, and texting. In fact, 94% of children and youth don't respond to their emails anymore. They only respond to Facebook's uh, posts, uh, text messages, and Twitter messages. So to just say, to cut it off, it's like something that they can't do because that's how they communicate with one another. Right, and it doesn't seem fair to have them right. cut off communications from the ones that are being their support Correct. <laughs> Correct. as well then. Mm -hmm. um, and you had said that she told you something about the golden rule and how that pertained right. to bullying. Right. Um, she said something really interesting um, pertaining to the golden rule, and that was, um, of course, the golden rule being um, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. She said the reason bullies exist are that they don't know how to love themselves. Um, we have a whole world of people who, for whatever reason, don't know how to love themselves. And so in order to make themselves feel better, they, they make, um, you know, they tear other people down uh, to lift themselves up. And so the real issue is how can we in the church teach the bullies how to love themselves? You had mentioned also that uh, sometimes they set up prayer groups within the churches mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that that's another way that the bystanders can mm -hmm. help mm -hmm. in a safe way. That she lifted up an example down in Georgia of these three young girls in junior high who instead of being BFFs, they were um, PFFs, prayer partners forever, okay. uh, instead of best friends forever. Mm -hmm. And they really surrounded each other. And one of the girls started being bullied. And they just surrounded her with the love and support that she needed. But moreover, they prayed every time for the bully who was bullying her. Um, I mean, there's very, you know, we believe in the power of prayer in the church. And um, I think that's very important. It's, it's not enough just to pray for those people who are being bullied but we need to also remember the bully in these things. Absolutely, I think that's probably the difference in the Christian outlook on it might be that you definitely do want to pray for the bully because as you said, maybe they don't feel uh, worthy and so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they um, need that love and support as well. Correct, correct. <laughs> 
you said you learned something about a text code. What is that about? Um, text language, you know, uh, IDK, I don't know, um, <laughs> is all over. You know, kids use it all the time. I don't understand it. I text in, in real, uh, real text because <laughs> I can never figure it out. But evidently, in certain communities, there is texting uh, code for bullying. And parents don't know about it, but other kids do. And it becomes very dangerous because a parent could look at someone's phone, uh, their kid's phone, and it just looks like they're having a normal conversation when, in fact, they're actually being bullied or, or bullying someone else. Um, and there are websites that you can go to try and decipher these, but about the same time that they get deciphered, the code changes. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's very difficult. What's one thing that our viewers can take away from what you've learned? Um, I think the one thing that's important for all people uh, who work with children, uh, youth, or young adults is that we need above all else, we need to show that they're loved. They are created by God to be loved by God and that they need to be loved. Um, and when instances of bullying occur, we need to love the bully and we need to make sure that every kid knows uh, that they're loved. There are a lot of awkward kids out there I was one, <laughs> you know, I was a spaz when I was, uh, when I was young, oh yeah. And so that was, that was really important, uh, I think, is to make sure that our youth uh, and our Sunday school teachers are making sure that every single child that comes to them uh, leaves knowing that they are loved completely. Well, it's a great message for the church to try and just surround all of the children in the church with love and and let them know that they are valued and so if you would like to learn more about cyberbullying you can check out my blog as well as find a link to warren's blog at sesquihannaexpress.blogspot.com